Hi, hello and welcome, Mike Roper, Hunter here. And all of those uh, fast moving dots that you see, these are red blood cells, red blood cells that I got uh, from my finger uh, because I took a little sample uh, from my blood and to put it under the microscope to show it to you. Well, in this video, I do not only want to show you different uh, macroscopic techniques uh, to observe these uh, red blood cells, but I also would like to add a little bit of salt water and also distilled water to the blood and then the shape of these red blood cells changes because uh, of uh, osmosis and uh, there are a couple of very interesting observations uh, that uh, we can make uh, this way. Well sometimes the red blood cells under the microscope they start to stack up on top of each other just like you can see over here this is called rouleau formation it's almost like a stack of coins and this is a natural process that happens when blood starts uh, to coagulate. Well I call this self-sacrifice self for the sake of science. Here here we go. Um, I got myself uh, some lancets. Uh, these are sterile little um, things, needles that you can buy and uh, essentially they are used to, to take blood samples to test for blood glucose level. I of course use them to get a little drop of blood on my microscope slide here. There is a little bit of psychology here also involved. Uh, it's kind of scary a little bit to try to prick yourself but with a little bit of practice I was able to overcome myself. The hole was very small and, and I needed quite a bit of pressure to press out uh, some um, of the blood and the wound was so small that it immediately started to heal off again. But still of course um, I first disinfected my finger with a little bit of alcohol. I do not want to get an infection. Well I quickly put a small drop of blood on the microscope slide. I say quickly because I did not want, to, uh, want it to dry up. And then I used, rel used relatively large cover glasses um, and I placed them on top here and due to capillary action the film the blood film spread all across uh, the slide and uh, this uh, created a very thin layer of red blood cells which you're able to see here and in the center you're also able to see that some of those red blood cells already start to stick together because this blood already starts uh, to coagulate um, a little bit. Now depending a little bit on the thickness um, of the blood layer um, some of the red blood cells actually start to move a little bit and also as the blood starts to dry up this also sometimes causes a little bit of motion and movement uh, which kind of uh, yeah is almost similar to when the blood is actually flowing. After a few minutes I could actually see that some of the red blood cells started to become a little bit irregular. These are called echinocytes. Uh, these are essentially red blood cells that start to deform because they start to lose water. And uh, this is a very nice uh, picture here as well where you can see that uh, there are some of the red blood cells streaming across the slide and on the side this is where the blood already started to coagulate and to stick uh, to the glass slide. It almost looks a little bit like a blood passing uh, through a blood vessel. This here is in phase contrast and uh, this actually I think looks also quite beautiful. Phase contrast microscopy also is uh, used to increase uh, the contrast of very weakly stained specimens and you see that uh, over here uh, the blood cells look again a little bit different. They almost look a little bit like they have a bright ring um, around them. And here also some of the red blood cells flowing around ear bubbles. These are the oval round structures. Now many of you probably do not have phase contrast at home. But it is quite easy actually to also observe uh, them in dark field. Um, you all you need is to add a small dark field patch stop, a dark field filter uh, to your microscope and then the red blood cells start to appear bright uh, in the form of bright rings. So now I wanted to actually add a little bit of salt water. So again a little bit of uh, self-sacrifice here. Over time I got a little bit more practice. I was a little bit more self-confident in pricking myself. Um, and then I made a little bit of concentrated salt water so and what this does is, is it actually removes the water from the red blood cells and this actually changes, significantly changes the shape um, of these red blood cells. So again a small drop um, of blood on the microscope slide and you can see that the blood did not spread completely all uh, beneath uh, the cover glass but there was some area on one side where it could add a little bit of salt water. Unfortunately I spilled a little bit of uh, the salt water also on top of the cover glass so I had to carefully remove that again as well because of course I do not want that the salt water contacts my microscope um, objective. Well and as the capillary action it pulled the salt water in beneath uh, the cover glass um, of course the blood and the salt water started to mix uh, with each other and then this is when essentially the salt water was able um, yeah, to do its action and uh, by osmosis 
the blood cells started to lose water and as the water streamed across I was trying to follow along some of those red blood cells. Off we go. Um, the movement was so quick that I was not able to see the change in shape uh, but then I stopped uh, the microscope slide and look carefully. Well gone is the nice round shape and the cells are much smaller right now and they're kind of shriveled up a little bit and quite irregular because of course uh, there are wrinkles and, uh, because um, the central part of the cell started to shrink um, and uh, because uh, the water was all removed. And uh, of course uh, this means that uh, the cells are not able to transport oxygen anymore but luckily of course I think that uh, this is not really a very realistic uh, scenario because normally we do not get so much salt into our blood but normally this is also something that uh, essentially now shows why drinking salt water is not uh, the best thing to do. Yeah and here again you see a little bit of streaming of the red blood cells very irregular right now and very yeah misshape them a little bit. Something I did not try is I did not uh, try to reverse the process. Maybe that's uh, the topic of another video. And here again there is the streaming now of the red blood cells and um, as the salt water and as the blood starts to mix beneath the cover glass. Now I personally think that the blood is a very interesting thing to observe. If you have a bright field microscope of course you can also observe uh, the blood cells this way. Um, I would recommend that you actually close the condenser quite a bit because the contrast is not very high. As a matter of fact you probably have already noticed the color is not red. Uh, blood only appears red when you do not look at it um, under magnification. If you zoom in a lot then maybe a small pinkish tint you're able to see but generally uh, the red color is not visible anymore. Uh, here again a couple of air bubbles and uh, interesting to see how the blood cells move around uh, those air bubbles which are essentially like obstructions and uh, you, it's a little bit of fluid dynamics that you can observe here as well. You can see also that uh, some of the red blood cells they start to stick around uh, uh, to this air bubble as well. I think uh, quite interesting to see the phenomena magnified. So and now a little bit of distilled water. Here the effect is reversed. I simply added some of this distilled water again. Um, I put it under the microscope and now the red blood cells started to swell up and to become spherical and significantly more difficult to see. Now I'm going to show you right now why I think they were difficult to see is because maybe the red blood cells actually started to pop open to spill out the hemoglobin and then the refractive index inside the cell and outside of the cell are the, sa is the same and then you do not see it quite well. As a matter of fact uh, using bright field I had a, almost a, it was impossible to see the cells uh, using a distilled water. Yeah I zoomed in here a little bit more again again a very nice and spherical shape and uh, if you just followed along a little bit you could actually see that all of a sudden those the red blood cells they started to disappear. Well of course they're still around but I think they popped open, they spilled the contents out and then it made it much more difficult to actually see them. And now you can also see a little bit the pinkish uh, uh, surrounding here. Again in phase contrast the bright circles these are air bubbles again and now you can see those so-called ghosts you call them those empty red blood cells. They are seen as light, dark little structures but towards the center of the slide where more, most of the blood cells are still intact this is where I could still see the original shape much better. But on the periphery on the side where it contacted the distilled water many of the cells I think uh, popped open and uh, essentially yeah, formed those um, empty red blood cells called the ghosts. And here a large air bubble in the center and you could, can see the small dark structures I think uh, these are all the empty red blood cells. They have blown up yeah, because of the water entering and then they uh, pop open and then I think they collapsed again and this is why they look uh, a little bit small right now and not spherical anymore. Again in phase contrast um, and uh, also quite, uh, quite nice to see. Now of course uh, when you look at blood you always have to be a little bit careful uh, and uh, observe hygienics. Uh, so do not do this uh, if you're a teacher do not do this in school um, of course because when you have an open wound then this is of course uh, the possibility for infection and you know students sometimes are not very careful. Yeah here this is again uh, these are again the red blood cells uh, as they are seen normally under the microscope and you can also see again this nice low formation where the cells are stacking up like 
like it also, uh, yeah, stacks of coins. Well, if you like these type of videos, then I would like, of course, to invite you to subscribe to this channel. I would also like to invite you over to my second YouTube channel, which is uh, essentially about microscope hardware, where I talk a lot about yeah, the optics and uh, yeah, other microscopy related issues. Um, I do also have a newsletter. I would like to invite you to subscribe to that. There is the link is all in the description and of course a big thank you goes to all of my patron supporters um, who are making these videos possible. I think for today this is again enough. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time and bye bye.